Carol Kane. After a successful theater and film career, she's found a home, not to mention an Emmy, at the Sunshine Cab Company on NBC TV's Taxi. Comedian Marty Allen. Author Philip Garner on his Better Living catalog, The Absolute Necessities for Contemporary Survival. And our film critic Michael Medved will review Eating Raoul. These are Mike's guests along with the entertainment news from Sandy Kenyon. And it's all coming up. From Hollywood, it's Mike Douglas, People Now. Now, here's Mike. Hi, you, Dennis. Annie Hall, Carnal Knowledge, Hester Street. World's Greatest Lover, that was one of yours. Uh, there are just some of the films that you've seen our next guest in. Her most recent coup was uh, winning the 1982 Emmy for Best Actress in a comedy series for her role as Andy Kaufman's immigrant bride, Simca Gravis, on Taxi. Here's Carol Kane. Hi. You're wonderful. You, Thank you. You have a quality uh, on the big screen. I don't watch... Uh, I don't have the time to watch situation comedies. I really don't. But on the big screen, you have a quality that kind of reaches out for people. Oh, you know, I remember you in World's Greatest Lover of uh, kind of a sympathetic quality. Well, thanks. I, I uh, hope I retain it. Do a little Simca for me, will you? Well, she talks a little like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, this is the way that I saw my husband, Latka, talking in the show. And then um, I just picked it up. We're from the same country, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you improvise most of your foreign dialogue? Do you just we, when you, um, when you get into that? You know, uh, the, the scripts are written in English, and so we know exactly what we're saying to each other, and the, the rest of the cast knows what we're saying, but then we just... Um, I said to Andy, the first time I did the show, which was, oh gosh, three years ago, um, I was very panicky about this language, you know, how was I going to improvise it and everything. So he took me out to dinner to a Chinese restaurant where nobody knew either of us, and he insisted that I order and speak in front of the waiter only in this language. <laughs> and, <laughs> you and talked to the Chinese waiter that way? Yes, I did. Yeah, what and did you order? Do you remember? N uh, no. I <laughs> you have any fortune cookies? Did no. you do? Well, like I would tell him what I wanted, you know, you tell uh, Andy, vegetables, and then he would order. snow peas, and, and then, it, no, but then when the waiter would come, he'd say, well, what do you want? And then I'd have to, uh, y you know, do it in this language. And um, did he, How did the waiter react? Did he react like he was being put on? Or no. He, or just normal? Maybe Andy paid him a lot of money, <laughs> but he didn't react like that. And, um, Is Andy Kaufman playing with a full deck? I've always... He's I think he's playing with two or three full but decks. But he came on my show one time and did that voice that you described. He did? Yeah, and he had, as I remember, a piece of luggage that looked like it had been around the world several times and props in it which he never showed he did. and then when we go to commercial I'd, I'd speak to him and I'd say okay you can get out of character now I said I want to hear what you sound like he never got out oh, of really? character he, he kept it up like and just kept looking at me with his eyes <laughs> he well is, he's an he's unusual wall, guy he? yes he is I, some people, I, I don't know, I feel like if Andy was hit by a truck, his dying words would be in whatever character he was last playing. He does I another swear. offbeat character as a rock and roll uh, star, which he doesn't want people to know about. He goes on shows. Oh, you all mean with Tony the full, Clifton? Yeah, with all the makeup on, and that's Andy Well, Kaufman. he swears that it's not him, well, and uh, he is me. my husband. So, Although he did tell me the other day that I could make up any stories about him that I wanted to. <laughs> so, um, but... Uh, I want to talk about you. You are what could be called... You're not a regular on that show, a regular, regular, kind of a semi I'm a regular. semi, yeah, I'm a semi. But you're from the big screen, and you're a product of Broadway, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, do you really want TV all that much? Not in general, I mean, not anything, but... but um, 
Taxi, I think, is a fantastic oh, a show. The, the quality of the scripts of Taxi are better written than uh, a number of the screen, almost all of the screenplays that I've read Leaving. lately. Well, that's saying something. Truly, and the cast, you know, are, are magnificent Great actors. Great cast. Um, um, all of whom have done f feature film. Sure. And uh, the writers and producers, I mean, they work till four in the morning almost every night of the week to, to, to make that yeah. script perfect. I'm not kidding. You know, the cast works all day, then they come and see a run-through in the afternoon, then yeah. they work until early in the morning every night. Uh, they take that kind of pride in the show. I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, I just enjoy it. Were you excited much. about your Emmy? Oh, I was stunned. I really... Really, it still doesn't seem real You didn't to me. think you had a chance? You were one of five nominees. Why would but, you have a chance? Well, because I had only done two episodes <gasps> last year. That's incredible. And, uh... And because, you know, I never won something like that before. So, y you know, you always think in terms of, well, it'll be the other person, and I'm yeah. really pleased to have been nominated. Did you even think about an acceptance speech, though, that that crush your mind? Well, I wrote down uh, the names of the people that I would have to thank, should uh, that I wanted to thank, uh, should I win. win. Because the other thing about television is there are so many writers, and I did not want writer-producers, and I did not want to leave any. But yeah, I mean, the cast is six people as it is, yeah. and then say six writer producers, not to mention my mother, my father, <laughs> my acting teacher. And um, so I thought, well, you know, on the off chance, I don't want to go up there and alienate someone or hurt someone's feelings. However, I did not formulate a speech in my mind. Just kind of winged it. And uh, did you write on, on a piece of paper on your hand like we did, used to in school? Did you no, ever do I, I had the old white paper. The I old was not subtle. Paper. <laughs> How has it, the move to NBC? change the show, if at all? Well, I think the guts, if you'll excuse my language, of the show have remained the same. Um, but I think that getting canceled um, has just renewed everyone's commitment to, mm -hmm. to the excellence of the show. And we feel that we were canceled for not healthy reasons you know i think that taxi is 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 one of the brighter shows on television yeah, and it's, it's not healthy that it should disappear and a lot of people feel that way so uh, other than that i don't know how it's changed except that uh, nbc seems to feel committed to a a, a quality night of television sure. and not just you know you drop half a point and you're off the air uh, and i don't think that they um, are censoring us and uh, trying to, to make... You don't think they're censoring you? Well, I mean, I know that there is a censor oh, for course. every television yeah. show, but what I mean by that is the, they're not, like, toning down the plots and saying, well, wait a minute, this mm. is a touchy subject and yeah. uh, this might not appeal to everyone. Because once you start to appeal to everyone, then, you know, there's nothing special anymore. It's not unique. Oh. You I'm going to keep the place. I'm going to go uh -oh. on now what you I just said. We're going to pause and come right back. I want to hear the rest of that, what that lady just said. Don't you stop.